rolled in the back of his head. And that was the last word he said. It was just tragic. You know what I mean? I mean, he was really out in. Lots of people died. It's not funny, man. It's absolutely not funny. It'd be funnier if it hadn't happened to such a good guy. He was so solid. Best fucking bass, six string bass player we'd ever seen. But Brian Wilson said, when he came over in 64, he said, these are the best guys I've ever seen. These guys are absolutely amazing. And I said it just like that. Once these things have gone by, you tend to get a bit of sense of humor about them if you're alive and anyone. Really groovy, baby. And it's something you gotta see. And it's something I didn't know this, but you gotta give it all to me, baby. Can you see? Baby, can you see? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it coming. Oh, oh, video. Are we we good now? Yeah. Uh, ah, this yeah, is. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I showed up this morning in a car. I washed and uh, put my head. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, my name is Hamish McTavish. I um, was born in 1957, and I was on tour with the uh, Grateful Dead before I came out to England. And then I started working mostly with Cream, and for a little while with the um, Small Faces. Uh, rolling. And and how did you meet the Peasant Revolution Band? The Peasant Revolution Band. Man, how did we meet the Peasant Revolution Band? I mean, they were everywhere, man. They were opening for everybody, from Clapton to, 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 to Lemmy.
Lee's never been more on point. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. Thanks for reminding me. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. So, we hung around for a little while longer and we were looking for someone to get up there and fill the void. That's when Mama Cash showed up. Mama fucking Cash. She f Guys, is that you? Oh my God. It's been like... Hi! Yeah, Jeff dies. Good to, good to see you. Jeff! Yeah, for yeah, Christ's no, no. sakes, man, it's really it's fucking... It's been ages. Nice, no, it's groovy to see you. Yeah. I'm see, just doing... I'm just doing... doing an, an interview, yeah? Well, yeah, it was, for a while, You're but now... Talking, you aren't talking about the old days or anything, are you? We were... No, we were. We were reminiscing about the you old days. You didn't bring up the, like, the green tortoise thing? We were talking about BLB, of course, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what this... You know, used, that's but not the want. night at the hotel or any of that, right? No, I haven't got... No. Would you like to talk about that? No, that nothing happened. We, uh, ended, we kicked uh, Bob Dylan out that night and uh, see now Dylan in church on Sunday. Dylan wouldn't play. Well, he wanted to play, but he wouldn't play. He was too high. He always came in really, really high. These guys had right, influence. These, this chap in particular, totally blew him away. He wouldn't even get up after that. He was just like, <clears throat> he's like, you want to do it? I'll, I'll do it. Ah, ah, ah. That's a green bit. tortoise. See, that's, I said green tortoise instead of blowing with the wind, and that's the whole joke came but, from there. As I recall, he was like, he, he, would, he, he, would, he, would, he would come in the room, and, and after, you know, a very embarrassing like, minute or so on stage, he'd be like, I can't play with those guys. I'm going to stand over here and smoke some cigarettes. Yeah. Then Mama Cass sits in his lap. He couldn't get up. Broke his guitar. Had it coming. Had it coming. Thank you, McTavish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, you're great, you know. It's fun. One thing you should know when I get you alone, I gotta see you, girl. Gotta see you, girl. Not the same as before. Just get down on the floor. I gotta see you, girl. Gotta see you, girl. Thank you all. You're great. See you on the next time. Oh, the bridge of sighs to rest my eyes in shades of green under dreaming smiles to itchy
that minute. Your diet is all wrong. Quit heaping misery on top of misery. It's time to eat broccoli. Lots and lots of broccoli. Green from the ground, pure earth, pure health. Broccoli has health benefits that have been known for thousands of years. You'll outthink and outsmart everyone. There's no better nutrient source known to man than broccoli. Eat broccoli and soon you'll be jogging faster than your neighbor. Your brain functions and cognitive abilities will be increased tenfold. You'll outthink and outsmart everyone. Crunchy, luscious, miniature tree-like, appetizing broccoli. Eat some today and keep on eating broccoli forever. This message was produced in conjunction with the Obnoxious Broccoli Growers Association of America. How's this on a mind? Gonna amend to anything! It's okay if we can't see or hear.
now we'll lock you in. Oh yeah. That had a moment. Bam, we are back. We're back. We're back with all sorts of uh, fun things going on tonight. Um, you know, I, uh, I I find Generation X always uh, finds new adversity in these times we live in to, to understand. And, uh, well, and that brings me to the, the wonderful talents of the Peasant Revolution Band. Uh, Rich Reese, our musical director on the drums. How are you doing, sir? Good, good. We, we missed you on the uh, the last go around of it. You, you want to tell us what you were up to? Yeah, I was down in a little place called Sanibel Island, the Gulf Shore of Florida. Oh, that's beautiful. How was yeah. the weather? It was pretty good. Yeah, yeah? Pretty good, yeah. It looked like it was pretty crappy up here. I think you guys had some <laughs> cold well, air and some snow. We had another snowpocalypse situation. Yeah, I heard it didn't like totally happen, but there were plenty of flakes around here. There was a lot of snowflakes in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Um, that's what they say. That's yeah. what they say. Some people are proud of it. Some people are uh, antifa about it, you know? And sure. you just kind of, yeah. But, uh, it's, yeah. and then our fabulous bass player, Steve Sabila, speaking of antifa. Mm -hmm. I we uh, I don't know why I said that. I'll just throw it out there. Why do those proud boys have problems with snowflakes? I don't get it. I mean, because snow is all white. Right. Yeah, you would think, they would, like yeah, you would like that. You would like that. Well, and here's the other thing that's in the news today. I'm finding is the uh, and of course the commander has joined us. Our wonderful friend, the commander. Working with him, by the way. I want to point out we are working on Creep Van as I speak. We are having some great sessions, as well as the forthcoming Peasant Revolution Band album, which we've got a humdinger planned for you this year, I'll tell you. I bet. But this, this, there's this Mueller report thing hanging in the air. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. It's like a, something about Germans yeah. peeing on each other or something. Is, is that he, what? Is he the guy at the NTSB that's covering the 737 Max issue? In, in Max in Portland, or no, the you know the big 737. Oh, that Mueller. No, he isn't. Is he? Yeah, I think Mueller. Really? That's why it's getting so much attention. Mueller's the guy who's covering that for the NTSB, and so that's the report we've been waiting for, right? Right. Right. Yeah. And so, he's a, so he's an air a German airplane guy. Yeah, and so it came out it was not definitive. And so that leaves a lot of the traveling public a little concerned. That's my understanding, at least. Well, and uh, uh, speaking of that, Scott and I were just traveling, and uh, you know, yeah. I've uh, we got a little something I'm going to show you here. So uh, let me come back just a minute. This is a special little thing about Scott and our travels throughout the South. started on a beautiful sunny day, March 10th, 2019. It was turning into a long flight. By the time we got to Denver, my suspicions had been completely aroused because I was rereading the same five articles that my phone was able to catch mid-flight. Important things like the secret societies and their influence in these parts of the country. Over and over again, I read this. in Denver was fantastic. I ate a splendid chicken sandwich. We're having a blast in a rock and roll Austin. As we descended upon Austin that night, I thought of the various artists and festival goers that had joined us in Denver and delayed our flight. Were we going to be in the same places? 
Would Scott and I make sound for some of these artists? A squirrel, perhaps? Did they happen to see any secret or satanic symbols at the airport? We landed deep in the heart of Texas. And it was finally time to get our car. Hey honey, we just got into Austin. We're uh, getting our car. We headed out to Bastrop. But before we could reach Bastrop, Texas, Scott had a little pit stop in mind before hitting the hotel. There's a yellow rose in Texas that I am gonna see. Nobody else could miss her. That's right, Bucky's. I've never seen so many different and various proud displays of meat in one place. Oh, the jerky. The turkey. I had always dreamed of going to Austin. Now was finally my chance. The city was amazing. So much character and history, I could see why it gets compared to Portland a lot. But I soon detected tension within the ranks. Despite all of our previous journeys together, I'd never been in Texas with Scott before. How would this go? Would I measure up to the rigor he expected of me? See, this is all the weird historic shit, man. Uh -huh. Wanna go in there? Sometimes Scott and I don't really communicate our feelings verbally. Setup went very well as we settled into our venue at the Clive Bar in Austin. The staff was wonderful and very courteous. This guy was really our only live musical act for the day. But when he jumped into the crowd, I thought for sure he'd broken his legs. Oh, to be young again. was a wild one. Lots of big name celebrities. Throughout it all, the eye, this damned all-seeing eye was popping up everywhere. Maybe it was a lack of sleep, but it felt as though we were being watched. Music was fantastic all week long. With all of the noise and yelling, Scott had already begun to lose his voice. We're in the car with Super Dave Osborne. He's going to take us through his stunt routine. Super Dave, it's all you. Okay, Jeff, I'd just like to show you a little stunt that I have been working on. <laughs> oh, shit!
The morning had arrived with an overnight rainstorm. I remember putting this tarp over our microphones, thinking how clear the sky was. Luckily, as a native Oregonian, I'd seen this kind of fake out before. The gear survived and the show continued unabated. It is why a tarp is always the weapon of choice in every good sound guy's arsenal. Many new faces and worked with outstanding bright new stars. Sixth Street, Austin, South by Southwest, the nighttime. We were there on the ground. Streaming live. Hi, uh, Jeff Dodge here with the Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour. I'm here with uh, Scott Peterson, premier sound engineer. Uh, we're here in the, he's a professional, don't worry. And we, we're on 6th Street. We are at South by Southwest. We're on 6th Street. Uh, we, have, we have a friend here. I think I'm seeing things. I might be drunk. Am I drunk? No. Oh, it's, it's another pink elephant. They're looking good. To know some of the local lore, I was reminded how often the owl is a part of this secret society stuff. It was then that I noticed the shape of a building. It was an owl building. An all-seeing owl eye type of thing. A monument to secret flight, perhaps. Steady. Be calm. I wasn't completely sure how much Scott knew. And, uh, and we're here on 6th Street. Uh, Scott is running, he's running away. I see the Owl building, there's a lot of uh, some comments coming in. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of Illuminati stuff out here, it's very strange. Anyway, we'll try and check in later. Thanks, I'll uh, check out these comments when I have a chance.
bit of Ritz. Whoa, we got some watchers. Yay. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's fascinating. I've never been here to Austin. I, I thought about moving here. It, what a party and, and very, very well policed, it looks like. Uh, characters, lots of young ones that I don't understand how they can afford to be here, but, you know, God bless them. Settled into a field trip to LaGrange, Texas. 
That's right, in quest of the origins of the classic ZZ Top song. As we were walking around the town, looking for signs of ZZ Top or any other kind of clues, we discovered the Fallen Heroes Museum of LaGrange, Texas. Huh, that's an interesting marker there. We were greeted by the hospitality of Charlie and the wonderful charm of seeing one of the county's oldest jails. Charlie told us some grand old stories. We got to see how they jailed people in the 1880s. And Scott even got to visit the drunk tank. We went there in search of the world's greatest barbecue. Things were wonderful. I love Texas. It's a big state in a big country. And uh, I will always treasure our days at the South by Southwest Music Festival 2019. To all of those that we met and got to work with, thank you very much for the experience. Portland. Shit. We'll never forget those days of our youth. Ah, oh, Christ. Whoever does. Wait, I think I... That's from something... Is that a... Dreyfus say that? I, anyway, it's its so hard for me to conclude these voiceover narrations in a succinct way of any form, but... I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. You kids. Yeah. Well, you and Scott, uh, I remember when he used to ride the rails. You know, he, that was his way of getting down there. You know, I he uh, he he lived in the Great Depression era for a moment. I guess there's this he had the ability to time travel and do that. Well, yeah. I mean, he was in uh, you know Minnesota in the eighties. Right. That right. Was a tough. The birthplace of hot tub time machine, I believe. Or is that Colorado? Maybe yeah, that's Colorado. We just watched Dumb and Dumber. And uh, cool. speaking of Dumb and Dumber and Scott and I in Texas, uh, there's, a, there's a great, wonderful anniversary I'm happy to celebrate with our good friend, uh, the, a wonderful actor. Uh, the the uh, we've been at this for a long time, and I, I'm very excited he could join us finally. Um, I the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Alistair Duff. <laughs> Goodness. Oh my goodness. So good to see you, my friend. Good to be seen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've, uh, we've been doing this for a There's while. There's a lot of people in here. Yeah, There's and... There's a lot of fucking people in here, man. Are you all right? Can you handle it? Yeah, I can hang in here. I can hang um, in here. I'm for the time. Good. We, we've, uh, I, uh... Shh. 
I've worked with uh, uh, some VIPs in the years. With all this noise. Well, uh, it's you know you have to be into psychedelia is sort of my philosophy. That's kind of bullshit, Jeff. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I see. We, we want to start right at that point. Mm. Yes. Uh, you make the point. I'll sharpen it for you. This show has been a surprise. It's been a surprise. You're surprised. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you get the lines, the memo about what we're supposed to be talking about? Did you, your agent, you talked to them? No. Uh, I don't know anything about lines, bro. Okay, this is, uh, we're, we're doing a little fun thing here we call, uh, we like to call it the... Uh, the Fridays, the Fridays experiment. I was told there'd be a fridge. And uh, Alistair is is giving us a little method acting right now. What? Yes, the method. Am I supposed to be like, oh. Well, thanks for having me, Jeff, you know. Oh, it's so good to have, that was awesome, yes. Yes, everybody. Wasn't that something, you guys? Yes. Huh? Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Hey, thanks. I was I, I was going it. there for a while. I was going for a while. This is a good light for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great to see you, man. You're looking sharp. I am. I am feeling unsharp. I'm feeling as dull as a as a rutted pencil. You know, let me tell you a story. I uh, just got off the road myself. Mm-hmm. I was in San Diego over the weekend. Uh, really? Doing a little thing. Another, you know, another film I was working on. I did a, a little premiere down there. Uh, now, uh, full can, house, you know. Can we talk about this? The, now, I, Alistair and I got reacquainted as uh, he was acting in he, his, his, his career has... Uh, blossomed. The, just, he's huge. Booming. In the, uh, in the uh, uh, um, Worldwide. security business? Is that what the one character you recently played that I saw you in, where he was uh, uh, the locksmith? Is that, no, he was the, uh, not the accountant. Oh, of course, of course, of course. The locksmith, course. Yeah, wasn't yes. he? So he was, um, um, yes, he, he, was, he was operating a locksmith down in Arizona. Yes, and, tell me, tell us about that. You were in, what is the name of this movie? Uh, this is a film called Best Friends. Best Friends. Best, fr Best Fiends. Best Fiends. We are in the, those things that didn't do much school, but it's those things they put around letters when you don't say the letter. And the, the, the an umlaut? No, that's no. a German thing. I'm in those German piss papers again. Yeah, I don't just, know a, why just a blocks, you know, like, a, not quotations, but the brackets. Sure. Uh, anyway. Algebraic. Yeah. 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 Where were we? Well, uh, Best Fiends. Best Fiends. Pl I saw Tommy you Wiss and... Tommy Wissou. Tommy Wissou. Tommy Wissou is, uh, if you are familiar with... Uh, uh, James Franco story. Now, wasn't it your your friend is uh, was the writer of this, correct? The, the Rich Astero wrote it in Portland on edibles. He likes to say at a I, coffee I, shop in Portland, right? Uh, uh, yeah, he called it Glisten. Glisten. Mm -hmm. Glisten Street. Glisten I know where Street. that is. Yeah. And you know, there's. A, the, the, I think it is Glisten. Yeah. I think actually that's the truth of the matter. I corrected him in, incorrectly. But it's actually is Glisten. But tell that to Portlanders. It's. Uh, no, it's Glisten. Well, it's like Widler. Glisten and Widler. Widler and... Uh, I called it Widler all my life. Really? Yeah. Well, you didn't call the Willamette Willamette, did you? Where? The the Willamette Week, you know what I'm talking about? Vaguely. Willamette Week is a um, very fascinating news organization. They uh, they bring in um, a revolving cast of people people to Portland every three years to sort of grill it and say like we think this is what Portland is now and everyone reads it and I guess that's what Portland is Why, this place doesn't stand still. oh I am Getting hearing uh, have you met Rich Reese our drummer yeah yeah sure. we go way back yeah so you know the thing I wanted to talk about uh, yes is this the whole band is everybody uh, was, this is the, the big last four. Time. Well, the horn section, uh, there was a little bit of a problem money, there. Money problem? Uh, I mean, we don't have to talk about Look, this right I now. fired the horn section, and we brought in uh, Peasant Revolution Band cover band horn section. They're not here yet, they're but they're coming talking. in to replace them. They're just... They're, yeah. They're, yeah. That's, well, there's probably rich. no audio right now is why they're yeah. talking. They love to talk behind my back. And with that, we're going to take an ad. Got We're gonna weird. take an ad break, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, it got real weird now. Number two. 
That's not our ad. That's Dan Palak. We wish the best. Door 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 Cheap sugar. Yeah, this is a tasty fish. It's brined in cheap and like a brand name soy sauce and cheap white wine. Cheap sugar, salt, little herbs in there, and you know, brined overnight. Let it dry out, form a nice pellicle. They call it fizz. Nice, nice sort of protective skin on the membrane. And then we'll smoke it for hours on end and just cheap white wine. Cheap white wine. Drink beer and wait. Cheap white wine. Line cod, barbless line cod, barbless hook, smoky to dry it out. It's a little smoky uh, flavor. Door to door, boat to boat. Free range line cod, barbless hooked. Just spend another month here just uh, hanging out, looking for work, and uh, drinking a lot of Safford Brothers downtown blend, taste the city coffee. Now, I'm really developing a taste for that. Uh, it's good stuff, you know, and uh, uh, it's really motivating me. Um, I really got to get back into the radio market because that's where my true love is now. I basically, I uh, was forced out of coaching uh, girls' volleyball and uh, JV football, and uh, you know. Uh, Sad news about Sid, I guess. You know, he's just just, just having to do that uh, 90 meetings uh, in 90 days kind of thing uh, out there in rehab. But uh, we're pulling for him. Sid's going to come back. Uh, I'm going to give up this uh, this chair. And uh, Sid's going to be back here drinking coffee in no time. It's, it's going to be Safford Brothers, downtown blend, taste the city coffee. It is always good. You'll love it from the first drop to the last. However many drops you can get in your body. you've got Tommy really more in, the, in volume one when you see Tommy's very deliberate deliveries we really got that in a lot of pieces you know because Tommy would definitely deliver but then continue <laughs> so when, you, when you take all that stuff and then cut it <laughs> cut it nice and tight it takes out a whole different thing so it's mm. really it's a lot of Justin massaging the whole thing where you had to break them down like get this just this bit <laughs> and then get the next because there's a lot of times you, he'll, he'll go in a way that you can't it's not telling a story so you literally have to mm. break the scene down into like specific shots for each moment uh, which was a huge challenge and um, yeah a lot of that uh, especially the opening scene in volume one where Tommy's kind of explaining who he is because if that scene doesn't work and makes no sense then you have no idea you're right back to square one where he's a banker in the room so uh, that was definitely a huge, huge, huge challenge Good, good Tommy story, just not a great story, but when we were doing um, some of the voiceover, because there's a lot of voiceover where he's explaining backstory and things, we did that. We went to our hotel room, we were staying in Las Vegas, and we went to our hotel room, and I was expecting, I just set up a mic on a stand and just sort of expected him to sit there and read it like this, but he's like, no, 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 I'm going to walk around. He started just walking around, doing his thing, and he insisted on acting, so chasing around a hotel room. <laughs>
gotten into so uh, so much uh, into the Safford Brothers downtown blend, Taste the City Coffee, and uh, of course, I just had to visit. I had to visit the factory where they're out there making that coffee, and I had to help them uh, just just get that fine art of those roasting the beans, you know. And yeah, I was pretty much looking over everybody's shoulder, and I think I came up with a couple of new techniques that are really refining the taste of this downtown blend, Taste the City Coffee made so excellently by the Safford Brothers. You're gonna love it, it's always good. The reason it's always good is because I went over there to that factory and I adjusted that temperature. The water temperature just had to be about two or three degrees. I'm an analyst, man. I know sports. I know every fine minutia detail about sports. And now I'm an expert. Downtown blend, taste the city, coffee from Safford Brothers. It's the best. It's always good. Carrington Chair Store is having our great July 4th sale with deals too explosive to miss. I know you've got old chairs around your house. Get some new chairs. We've got great chairs. We've got fancy, comfortable chairs. We've got incredible handmade seating. We've got dinette set chairs. We got metal and those poofy, comfortable chairs. And if you gotta need a wooden chair, we've got those too. In our basement, you can get chairs for your car or a beanbag chair. Hey, look, there's comedian Sid Sebastian in our showroom. It's, it's been so good having you here, Alistair. I thank you for everything. Just the uh, the love, the specialness, the uh, all the talking about Jeff Steele, the uh, you know T Scott in Texas. We haven't um, done that yet. Rich and what? Oh. No, are you saying we pre-record things? Don't be silly. The magic of Hollywood never enters here. You can see me face tap by the Beatles. Oh, is that what you want? You want to see me face tap? Okay, okay. This one goes out to the uh, uh, kind of the project we're working on and our, uh, our uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. So let's, okay. one, two, so three. three. When I call you up.
Okay. Thank you. 